In this part of nutrition, I'll discuss about the importance of carbohydrates, proteins and fats in the diet. Coming to the importance of carbohydrates in the diet, carbohydrate should constitute around 50 to 70 percent of the total energy required per day. So that is according to the balanced diet, but our diet contains more than that. So around 90 percent of the total energy is met by the carbohydrates that we take in the diet. Coming to significance of the carbohydrates, so carbohydrates can be classified into available carbohydrates and unavailable carbohydrates. So we know that available carbohydrates are all those sugars, glucose, fructose, all those sugars will come under available carbohydrates, those which can be digested and absorbed. But here I am going to discuss about the unavailable carbohydrate or indigestible carbohydrates otherwise they are also known as the dietary fiber. So this uh, dietary fiber requirement is around 30 grams per day and the examples of the dietary fiber they are cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, pectins, mucilages all these are the examples for the dietary fiber. So all these are undigestible these carbohydrates cannot be digested in our body so they are called as dietary fibers. The importance of dietary fiber, it has water holding capacity means it can hold water and swells like uh, a sponge so thereby increases the viscosity and uh, also adsorption of the organic molecules. Organic molecules like you can see bile acids, neutral sterols, carcinogens, toxic compounds. So all these can be adsorbed onto the dietary fiber so thereby it facilitates their excretion, prevents their absorption, increases their excretion. So dietary fiber has other functions like uh, it increases the bowel motility and thereby prevents the constipation and also it decreases the risk of the colon cancers. Fiber also has the hypoglycemic effect that means it lowers the blood glucose level. Another important function of dietary fiber is it has hypocholesteremic effect that is it reduces the blood cholesterol level. And this is by decreasing the reabsorption of cholesterol and bile acids from the intestine. So that is it interferes with the enterohepatic circulation. That's why high fiber diet is recommended in cases of cardiovascular diseases, colon cancer and diabetes mellitus. In addition to that you can see the activity of dietary fiber. In mouth it stimulates the saliva secretion, in stomach delays the gastric emptying, in small intestine delays the absorption so thereby it acts as a hypoglycemic factor and large intestine it traps the water and coming to stools it softens the stools so thereby it can prevent their uh, straining. We have seen the benefits of dietary fiber but if a person takes more amount of dietary fiber than the required amount then it leads to adverse effects that is as it has the capacity to bind with some minerals when a person takes more amount of fiber in the diet it leads to mineral deficiency. Now coming to the importance of fats around 35 to 45 percent of the energy is provided by these fats and as we know that the calorific value of fats is more that is 9 kilocalories per gram. In addition to providing energy, fat also has other functions like it helps in the absorption of fat soluble vitamins and also it supplies the essential fatty acids. In addition to that, uh, fats also increase the taste of the food and they produce feeling of satiety. The daily requirement of fat is approximately it is 50% uh, in case of infants and coming to adults it is 20 percent and we can say that around 20 grams of fat is required per day and out of that 20 grams 50 percent that is 10 grams should be obtained from the vegetable oils which are rich in the essential fatty acids. Now coming to proteins another important nutrient proteins they are important constituents of tissues not only that proteins in different forms they act as enzymes, they act as hormones, they act as 
transfer proteins they act as protective proteins so in this way they are involved in different functions proteins that we take in the diet mainly complete proteins they supply essential and non essential amino acids which are used for the synthesis of different proteins in our body the main purpose of the proteins is they supply amino acids those are used for the synthesis of proteins but they are not concerned with generation of energy primarily if a amino acid is not utilized then it may be used for the synthesis of energy diet should contain adequate carbohydrate and fat to spare the proteins for the synthesis of body proteins so that's why balanced diet contains carbohydrates fats and proteins in the ratio of 60s to 20s to 20 the amount of protein required per day in case of adults it is 1 gram per kg body weight and for children pregnant lady and lactating women it is 2 to 2.5 grams per kg body weight now coming to essential amino acids the amino acids which our body cannot synthesize if synthesized not in adequate quantities so those are called as essential amino acids they are required for the synthesis of proteins but as they cannot be synthesized in our body they should be supplied in the diet and the amino acids which are synthesized in our body they are called as non essential amino acids deficiency of essential amino acid leads to negative nitrogen balance so out of 20 amino acids in any protein 10 amino acids are essential and out of those 10 essential amino acids again 8 are essential and 2 are semi essential so the two semi essential amino acids histidine and arginine they are required during special conditions like childhood and pregnancy loss of nitrogen takes place during the normal catabolism of amino acids in our body so this loss of nitrogen is compensated by diet so that it does not lead to any negative nitrogen balance so always nitrogen balance is maintained in such a way that nitrogen intake and nitrogen excretion are equal so considering the nitrogen intake and nitrogen excretion there are three possible situations of nitrogen balance those are nitrogen equilibrium positive nitrogen balance and negative nitrogen balance nitrogen equilibrium is a condition in which nitrogen intake is equal to the nitrogen excretion and positive nitrogen balance indicates that the amount of nitrogen intake is greater than the nitrogen excretion this is seen mainly in case of infants and pregnant women negative nitrogen balance indicates that nitrogen intake is less than the nitrogen excretion and this is mainly seen in case of conditions like advanced cancer major injury trauma and kwashior kar marasmus the nutritional quality of proteins depends upon the its amino acid composition that is essential amino acid any protein which contains all the essential amino acids in required amounts then it becomes the complete protein and any protein that lacks one essential amino acid becomes incomplete and any protein which lacks more than one essential amino acid is called as poor protein and the examples of the complete proteins that we take in the diet are egg albumin and casein of the milk because they contain all the essential amino acids the protein quality can be assessed by taking the reference protein and the most of the cases the reference protein is egg and there are uh, methods in which the protein quality is assessed and those are chemical score or amino acid score net protein utilization protein efficiency ratio and biological value and coming to each one in brief chemical score is the measure of concentration of each essential amino acid in the test protein and comparing with that of reference protein so the formula for this chemical score or amino acid score is it is the number of milligrams of one amino acid 
per gram of the test protein divided by number of milligrams of the same amino acid per gram of egg protein multiplied by 100. Among most common proteins, the egg protein has a chemical score of 100 whereas the wheat protein has 42. Net protein utilization, it is the percentage of nitrogen retained by the body to that of nitrogen intake. So, protein efficiency ratio is calculated by using a formula where gain in body weight in gram is divided by protein ingested in gram. Now, biological value of a protein can be defined as the percentage of absorbed nitrogen retained by the body. So, it is calculated by nitrogen retained by nitrogen absorbed into 100. 